Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will take a moment to start creating our classes, which will be able to hold different kinds of skills or abilities and have a little bit of different properties if we wanted to. Uh, so let's just start creating that. Um, so far we have created a few abilities called a slash and a multi-slash. So it sort of makes sense that we were to create a warrior class first. So let's actually do that. We'll go to our third person character, create a child blueprint class because we have our third person character will act as our base class essentially. Uh, so this one will be our BP warrior class. So essentially from the beginning, this one will have nothing uh, different from the base class. Uh, it will be just be the exact same thing, but we will be changing that a little bit later on. Uh, for now, we will be creating a folder, which we will be holding this into. So we'll call this warrior and we'll move the base class in there. So in here, we can place other things that are related to the warrior that we want to keep here that would be separate from other things. Uh, one of the things we might want to create, for example, is a blend space for the movement of the warrior. So let's actually do that. We'll go to animation and we'll create an animation blueprint for, no, not an animation blueprint, an animation blend space. And you see, we have a lot of different skeletons from the different weapons we have, but the mannequin skeleton is one we're interested in right now. We call this BS for blend space and then call it uh, warrior. Now, when it comes to our warrior, we have a few different animations. We have something called, um, they're all called greatsword something. So we have, at least I think they are. Uh, so we have, for example, uh, greatsword walk backward. So this one would be the middle here. It would look like, uh, let's play it so we can actually see what it looks like. So that's what it would look like when it's walking backwards. Uh, walking forwards would be in the top front over here. That's what that looks like. Walk left, we place over here. Uh, walk right, we place over here. We have a great sword run right over here. Place that one there. Run left, we place over there. Run forward, we place over there. And backward, we place over here. So now we have placed them in, in a position so that the top part of this, uh, holding down shift by the way you can uh, move the point around to see how it will be blending between different uh, animations. And I have done uh, tutorials on animation blueprints, so I'll make sure to link that down below in case you're not um, uh, aware of, of how they work. But we will go through it a little bit here as well, of course. Uh, so now we have, so we can blend between like moving forward, backwards, running left and right. Uh, we also need to have some kind of idle animation to stand in the middle or to place in the middle when nothing is being done. Uh, um, let's see here. Did I forget one of those, I wonder? Let's see here. Uh, might be easier to watch over here. So it would seem that I forgot to include the idle animations for these. So I have created another small compressed package for you to download so you can import these. Uh, in, uh, I will have a description down below for where you can download them and then you can just import them like you did the other animations and they should be ready to be used. With the animations downloaded, we can now drag these into our project like so. Make sure to choose the same skeleton as before, like so. All of this should hopefully have all of your other settings that you had the last time. So we'll just import everything and we'll save those. Going back to our plant space for warrior, we can now find hopefully our great sword idol, place it in the middle 
so we have an idle position also to use uh, when we're not actually having movement input. So all of this looks fine. Uh, when it comes to the actual asset details for Blue Sprint, the blue blend space, we are going to be adding a name here called um, horizontal axis will be your left and rightwards movement. So we'll say right uh, speed, I guess. And vertical will be the forward and backwards. So we'll say forward speed. And since our character has a movement speed of 600, we could put that as our minimum and maximum value. So minimum would be minus 600 in right, maximum would be 600 in right. Uh, forward would be minus 600 for backwards and plus 600 for uh, forwards. And you can see that the grid here has aligned with these new values that we have put in here. So that's all good and fine. So that's that should be working well. Uh, going to our third person character and our animation blueprint now. We can open that one up and we can say that in its idle run state here, instead of using the third person anim, it can instead now make use of, uh, what did we call it, our blend space for warrior. And you can see that our blend space for warrior looks slightly different here. It has a right speed and a forward speed, unlike this one, which just has a speed. So we'll change this to be a forward speed. And we'll create another one, which we will call right speed. And we'll make that one of a type uh, float as well, like so. So then we'll just hook up forward speed into forward and right speed into right. And we'll hook this one up instead. Now the animation will break. Actually, it won't break because it, it recognizes I have zero speed, essentially. It doesn't really take into consideration these two different values right now. Uh, we'll move this out of the way. Um, so now we need to actually determine these values. We'll do that in our um, event graph, where we're currently calculating our forward speed through this means. Now what we want to accomplish here is essentially figure out how much are we moving forwards and how much are we moving right or in their inverse values essentially to do that we will be making sure to make use of our pawn actors uh, velocity and we will be comparing that with a dot product of a forward and a right vector so we'll just make a reroute node here and we'll say we want to get um, forward vector and we want to get our right vector if uh, you're unfamiliar about mathematics when it comes to these things, I will uh, add my tutorial on vector math so you can watch that if you want to get a better understanding of some at least rudimentary uh, calculations. Essentially what we want to do now is say we have a forward vector here. Compare that with by using a dot product against the velocity that we currently have, which will be in a certain direction. The value from this will actually be the speed that we have moving forward. So we can promote this to a variable. And actually, we don't need to promote it to a variable. This, we renamed this one. So this one is actually going to be the forward speed. Uh, we're going to do the exact same thing here with our dot product and making use of the velocity to check against our right vector. That will give us our rightmost speed. We'll actually promote a variable for this one and call it Actually, not promote variable. We have already created the variable. It's over here, right speed, like so. So we'll set it and just hook it up. And then we remove the two variables I created in vain over here. So now we have created our movement speed rightwards and forwards. And if we were to now play, we should be having our animation when it comes to our character in the movement directions that we have. But you can see that he's always only moving forward. He's always running forward. And that is because of the settings that we currently have on uh, the character itself and how its movement is. So to alter this, we will go to our third person character, which is the base class now. We'll go to the character movement. And here we can change some settings on the default behavior. Typing in our ROT as in rotation, we get some values immediately that we can make use of here. So if we check 
we have a use controller decide rotation uh, and a orient rotation to movement. If we change the positions of these, we uncheck the one that is checked and check the one that is not checked and then play, you can see that we now have the ability to uh, strafe forwards and backwards and it can do the blending over there. Um, so, so now you'll use your uh, mouse to orient your direction to look and your WASD keys will decide how the character will move in relation to where it is looking. So that's all good and fine. Before ending this, we may notice that our character is actually a little bit sunken into the ground. So I think that my properties where we imported animations is possibly not as uh, good as it could have been. So we can actually change this now right away actually by getting the animations that we uh, imported before. Actually, we probably don't even need to re-import them. We can just remark all of them except for the montages and then asset action bulk edit via property matrix import settings um, import data transform import transform now there we go so here's the the z value here so if we reset this to zero and then i think just Control s for saving and then we go back again and Mark everything and save and play. I'm not entirely sure it fixed the height, to be honest. Let's see. Looks, looks fine there. That's a montage, however. Let's see. Montage also seems to be slightly put in. So if we now now we've changed the import settings. So now if we were to re-import everything. So let's see if we mark everything, except the montages, re-import. Okay, and you saw maybe there that the character moved up. So essentially what we did here was we changed the import setting which we had before as a default to be minus eight, to be minus uh, zero instead, or zero. And then we just chose all the animations to re-import. That means that they will get themselves from wherever we uh, are storing the original file that when we imported them. And then they changed the height uh, on the characters. Now it looks better it's floating a little bit so you might want to put it a few units down maybe and then redo this but it's up to you how granular granular you want to be with your import essentially um now at least you have seen how it is done so you you can uh, reproduce it if you want to uh, but you might be using completely different uh, animation assets later on so this might not even be an issue for you but yeah uh, this is probably a good place to stop for now. I hope to see you in the next episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.